Welcome to it everybody. This is the Tradesman Channel. My name is Jim and we are getting back to work on our sawmill trailer again tonight. And uh, so for those of you who tuned into the last one and I was all concerned about things being bowed, not a whack, well it's been driving me nuts all day long. I just couldn't understand it. So sometimes a good night's sleep and just coming back and looking at it, it takes all your problems away. It's funny how that goes. So I come back in tonight to start working on it after work this afternoon. I start putting a level on everything. Everything is dead nuts level. I've got all the bunks, the trailer frame, it's dead nuts. Even the side I thought was a little crowned, it's dead nuts all the way down it, across the bunks, lengthwise. There's no twist. And I'm looking at it, so I throw my level back over these rails here. Now what the hell is going on with that? Why is that? And it wasn't by much. I mean, it's probably within sawmill tolerances. But uh, I got looking at it, so I put my level up here on the straight line, and this thing takes a curve down. So this is just about two and three quarter on this end, and it's three inches on the other end of this three inch angle iron. There's my problem. And the scary part is, I milled this whole barn on this rail right here. This is one of the rails from the sawmill you guys used to watch me use. But this, I think, I believe I put on the end because the holes on this end didn't quite line up to bolt the mill together. But that's crazy. It just takes a dip. That's where my problem is. So we're going to cut this off of here. We're going to go with the original plan, but I'm going to start bracing the crap out of it. And as you'll see shortly, I have the chain hoist mounted. So when we're done bracing, we can flip this thing over and start getting the, uh, get the tongue on it, get the axles on it and just start getting everything ready to go so it can roll. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do with these uh, troublesome jacks here that, you know, well, you guys know, you saw it last night. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch you on the other side of it. off any longer. Time to try to flip this thing over. But I think first what I'm going to do is just make sure that these timbers are going to handle it. I'm kind of taking a chance here. But what's the worst that's going to happen? I got to fix a floor. I get crushed under some beams. I guess that would be a really shitty thing, huh? That off. Everything in my shop is loud. And cluttered and loud. What we have to raise this up is I have these uh, one ton chain hoist suspended from the timbers upstairs. 
basically what we do is we have a 6x6 spanning three of the 5x8 floor joists, but we put them fairly close to the 10x16 tie beams. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop we're going to loop our chain fall around these big pipe nipples I have welded on. And we're going to try to use it like a big rotisserie. And what we're also going to do in this process is try to scoop this thing back far enough from the door so that I can get a tongue on this thing inside the building. But we're going to try to step off to the side for sure. And uh, let's see what develops here. This is either going to go swimmingly well or really crappy. I don't think there's going to be much for in between. six jacks off the floor. Now chain falls, chain hoist, whatever you want to call them, they are slow. But I'm going to tell you an old saying that's so true, the slow is smooth and smooth is fast. When you're using hand operated chain falls, it's a lot harder to make a mistake in what you're doing because you're cranking every inch of the way. It's a slow pickup, it's a slow movement, but that also makes it in my world a hell of a lot safer to do stupid stuff like this. Now we have a piece of metal, scrap metal, welded on the end of this thing and that's just so the strap can't slide off. We have that on both ends. going to want to swing just a little bit. Okay. So we're only going a few inches at a time here. So remember, like I said, we're moving this whole frame backwards. do it just a couple inches at a time like this, it's going to control how much this thing can swing back towards me because this is a lot of weight. If I had that other end picked way up and I just started cranking on this, this thing would come in here and take me out right at the legs and that would really suck. So we're just very easily letting the weight of this thing do the work for me. Right now, I can probably right there. So we're gonna let this end down. This is gonna be the fun part. This is the adventurous part. I think I need a bigger barn.
A little bit more. Here goes. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Well, everybody, I call that victory right there. Of course, I had to step in there, didn't I? Holy shit, was that easy. Let's just step over this. Ha <laughs> ha it's freaking nuts. All right, we could start welding the underside. This means we could do the tongue. This means we could get the axles on. Shit, yeah. All right, now the fun part's putting it back on the floor. We've got our jacks back on. Well, folks, I'm sorry the update for this one took so long. I started filming this last Friday night, and here we are. This will be coming out on Thursday if I get it edited tonight. But um, anyway, we now have the belly of the beast exposed. We could do a lot of welding from this side. Now that I see how easy it is to flip this over, I mean, honestly, that really took hardly any effort at all on my part to get this thing in the air and get it turned over. As long as those nipples are centered on there and your weight's evenly distributed, you should be able to do it just as easy as I did. Now, I've never done that before. That was my first attempt. You guys caught it on camera. And boy, am I happy that went well. That could have... Uh, I guess it's a really good thing that I built this friggin' barn as stout as it is. Because if this was just some kind of a 2x4 structure, or a 2x6 or whatever, I would not have been able to do that. That just made it so much easier. Now, I'm not afraid to pop a hole in the floor where I need to, you know, to run straps and whatnot. And that's what I did, some inch and an eighth holes for some uh, smaller straps up there. But, um, so, moving along, we're going to get welding this underside. We're going to start getting our axle set up in place. Now, I've got to get the tongue on there in the, uh, the hitch on there so that we can align these axles properly. It doesn't matter if the axles are square on this, this frame. What matters is from the hitch back to that first set of axles. That's what really matters. So that's what we're going for. I've got to cut the axles out of that old camper frame out there. And I was a little, I was a little nervous if 3,500 pound axles, there's two of them, was going to be enough for this trailer. But after hoisting it, I honestly don't think it's going to be a problem. Now these, uh, these chain falls are one ton a piece, so worst comes to worst, that's 4,000 pounds. We have 7,000 pound capacity. I'm not too worried about it. And honestly, I could tell you, I hauled timbers with these chain hoists that were a lot harder to pull up than this right here. Now, I am very happy. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next one.